Hello, you're listening to 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. My name is Danny Krastic, and today I'm here with a very special guest to talk about a very important film, um, but I'm going to let him take it away and introduce himself. Thanks, Danny. Uh, my name is Patrick Adino. I'm a writer-director, and uh, we're here to talk about my short film, Every Other Kid. So, uh, you know, to start off, since the film uh, just released, um, can you tell us about what the movie is about? Sure. The short film is a musical film about mental health and gun violence. It tells the story of three high school students as they navigate the challenges as, the challenges of adolescence and uh, their paths intersect. And that's the that's the overall format of the short. So how did you what what inspired you to make a, uh, a film about this specific topic? What was the the inspiration for this? I think it really all started. I, I grew up in Newtown, Connecticut. Um, I was attending Newtown Middle School when the, the shooting at, at Sandy Hook School happened. Um, and so I think it was something that I kind of grew up in, in the in the shadow of in a lot of sense. I, I think a lot of people sort of lost their innocence around that time. And just these topics would be things that we would hear about and were often discussed in a very personal way on kind of a national stage, international stage at times. And I think for a while I was just sitting with that and, and hadn't really been, didn't have anything to, to create based on that um, in the first few years. And then as I got a little bit older and I saw this happen more and more, I was, I was, inspired to to write this piece and it kind of came to me little by little and yes I started writing it when I was 18 and um was going to try to make it later that year and then was making a lot of creative concessions and realized that it was something that I wanted to really take my time with because it felt like the first piece I was making that was bigger than me in a sense so I delayed it and then uh it got pushed again because of COVID and we ended up filming in April of 2022 and finished the film later that year. We made a festival run last year into this year. And yes, now it's available online. Awesome. So to you know, go back to um, how you introduced the film initially, um, like you said, it's not, it's not just a film. It's a musical film as mm -hmm. well. So, I mean, did you write the music yourself or did you have uh, help with that? So I wrote the lyrics. Um, it's a rap musical. So the, the each character's story is, is they tell through a verse. And I always saw their verses kind of like journal entries because mm -hmm. a big part of the film is is these characters, who they have in their lives to talk to about the things that are going on. And it's, they kind of exist on a spectrum in that way. And I felt like when you can write to yourself and you have the security of knowing that no one else is going to read it. No one else is going to judge you for it. That's when you can kind of be your most authentic, vulnerable self. And so that's how I saw each of the verses. So I wrote the verses. They're very personal to me. Uh, the music I did not create. I, I worked with a number of producers in the early stages to kind of figure out the sound of what I wanted the piece to, to be. And then uh, I worked with a man named Tristan Orosky, who is a, a master student at NYU. And uh, he did the final uh, music that that's in the film and did the the mix and master and all that. So I did the lyrics, but not the music. Gotcha. So, I mean, what this might be a bit of a stupid question and maybe maybe I already know the answer. I don't know. But did did you always envision the film being a musical from the start? Or did you did you write the film first and have the idea to make a film about this? And then was like, oh, this, you know, making a musical at, um, adds a bit more, makes it stand out a bit more. Or was, did the music come first? Like, what was the, you know, what was the order of uh, how you came up with that idea? Sure. No, it's not a stupid question at all. Um, it was very much music from the beginning. That's that's how I, I saw it. And and people have asked me why. And I, I wish I had a better answer other than that's just kind of how it it hit me. I think in some ways... I think it serves a few purposes. The first, kind of like we touched on earlier when we talked about um, sort of the, the intimacy and the, the journal entry type approach, in a very short amount of time, it allows you to externalize information in a way that would otherwise be very internal. Um, so in some ways, it, it gave me the liberty to explore a little bit more and still a very compressed format. The film is, is 11 minutes. And then I think the other side of it is that 
music has this way of sort of softening the impact of the the harsh reality upon which the film is set um, without losing the emotional intensity of it. I, I think in some ways it can almost increase that. So I guess for lack of a better phrase, it, it almost makes it more digestible in a way. It's it's something it gives it maybe a little more replay value. It makes it a little more versus if you if you shoot something like this for reality, just as, as real as possible. I think that's a much tougher watch. I think the the music in a way makes it a little bit more palatable while still holding the same message. And I think that's ultimately uh, the combination that that I wanted is I didn't want to make something that that people couldn't look at and they couldn't they couldn't think about they wouldn't want to send to anyone. I wanted to make something that kind of resonated with people that you could sort of go back to and sit with, um, but still kind of makes you think about the the issues that are are being explored. Absolutely, yeah. So I mean, with the actors, like you said, there's three separate main characters. So did how what was the process of finding the actors did it did was acting more of a priority or did you take their uh vocal abilities into um consideration with it like how did you you know what was the process there sure uh from the beginning it wasn't important to me if the people on screen were the same people that performed the vocals i just wanted somebody who was good at both things to be doing them so if it was the same person great if we had two separate people and they were just lip syncing to a to a track then that's fine too and it just so happened that everybody in the film does perform their own vocals but that way it wasn't a must um but i definitely so so casting i was looking for the characters on screen first um to sort of embody the roles and then if i had to find someone to do the vocals i would but no they, they all perform the the vocals themselves um i found uh, Joey first. He plays the the second character in the film. He was on backstage. Um, Alan, I found the same way, also on backstage. He's the first character, Kevin. And then I found Tiger, who plays the third character, David, uh, through a, a friend of a friend, was also casting a, a similar um, age and ethnicity and, and recommended him to me. And um, I, I brought him on board, I think, 10 days before we shot. So it all kind of came together Um in, in different timelines, different ways. Uh, but I, I think they all all crushed it. And I'm very proud of the work they did. Absolutely. Absolutely. So walk me through now. I mean, at this point, you know, pre-production's all done, the music's all done, everything's ready to go. You get on set. How do you produce a musical? <laughs> like uh great question. And and something I, I couldn't have told you beforehand. I, I watched a lot of behind the scenes uh you know documentaries or featurettes online of of movies that i liked or just just movie musicals in general um i didn't know i i, I walked on to set that first day the first thing we shot wasn't a musical sequence it was just a quick shot of a car pulling out of a driveway kind of good way i think to get everyone sort of acclimated and used to working with each other but then we went inside and, and shot our first musical sequence and i wasn't sure how it was going to go and there was the possibility that it just wasn't going to play out the way I saw it because it was all so in my head up until this point. And then I remember we we ran through it once, we kind of blocked it out. We had an amazing steady cam operator named Kira. Uh, so she figured out where she was going to go. We brought the actors in and we did one take and everyone was kind of behind the monitor because of the setup we had. And I remember the feeling after that first take of, oh, yeah, this this is working. This is connecting. And people started applauding the crew and stuff. And it was like, OK, we've got something here. It was sort of a sigh of relief and still a lot of tweaks to be made and, and things we learned along the way. And, um, you know, wasn't wasn't perfect by any means. But, yeah, it was it was a it was definitely a worry going in. And I think as the, we shot for five days and as the time went on, everyone just kind of got more and more comfortable and we sort of had a shorthand with each other. And, and when it came to the musical aspect of it, we learned so much, for example, we needed a lot less coverage than I thought, you know, if you, if you shoot a sort of a standard scene, let's say it's a, a two people speaking at a dinner table, you know, you'll have your wide shot, you'll have your two singles. Maybe you'll do uh, even it's like, even more close up. So you have, let's say five uh, different shots you're going to do. So I kind of shot listed for this project in that manner, because that's the only thing I had done. 
But between the music aspect and the steady cam, I realized we didn't need all that. And it was actually more interesting if we very carefully blocked and rehearsed each shot and made it almost like choreography and just spent more time in the individual shots than if we spent less time on a bunch of shots. So in a lot of ways, the, the edit was kind of made on set because we were just planning out these very carefully choreographed longer shots and we would do, you know, 15 takes as opposed to doing three or four takes of a bunch of different shots. Yeah. So would you say that, you know, filming a musical film as opposed to just a standard film, would, you, would that take more time, less, like, did it make things easier or harder in terms of like, I guess, time? Oh, that's, that's interesting question. I think, I mean, this is, it certainly isn't a huge set dance numbers, like large scale musical. So I, I don't know if I can speak to that as, as far as what we did. I think it took the pressure off a little bit because in the musical sequences, you're not really worried about sound because you're just recording the scratch audio of the track, but that's all going to get replaced in, in post-production. So in terms of production sound, it took a lot of pressure off and, and gave us the, the freedom to just focus on the visuals. So in some senses, I would say it was it was easier, um, but it takes a lot of people coming together and, and working really well to make all that happen. So I, I don't want to make a definitive call on that, but uh, it, it was nice to have the freedom to really live in a take or a shot for a while and and get that just how we wanted it rather than feel like, OK, we got to move on because there's all these different elements that we're trying to manage. And with all that freedom and everything like that, was there anything that didn't end up panning out? Um, well, it's, it's interesting. There are things that didn't go as planned, but I wouldn't even ex express it now as things that didn't pan out. The biggest thing was there's a, in the beginning of the film, uh, as, as part of one of the, the songs, there's a, a dinner sequence that was all scripted to take place outside. But the day we were shooting, uh, it was very cold. It's supposed to take place on the 4th of July. We were shooting in April. It was probably the coldest day in April. And uh, there was rain threatening and we had a lot of equipment, a lot of people. So I decided to move the, the sequence inside and wasn't sure how that was going to go at first. While everyone was having lunch, I, I went off and kind of reconceived of the scene and, and figured out how I wanted to shoot it and put it together. And then I spoke to my DP and uh, the rest of the crew as to how we were going to do it. And now I love the way that it, it looks and how it how it played out. I, I think it it almost works more in some ways because we also have this sort of very organic transition to later at night. And then we have this sort of warmer lighting, which is just kind of a indication that time has passed. And I really like that, that whole sequence now. So it didn't go as planned, but it was something that we had to adapt to. And, and it's definitely different than what was in the script. Yeah. What was the hardest thing that you ended up capturing? Like the way that you wanted to originally capture it, but just was in the hardest thing to do. <laughs> sure. Um, I would say there's, there's they... one moment. Yeah, the, the, there's one moment, sort of the climax of the film. I don't want to talk about it too much because I like people just kind of going in, not knowing a whole yeah. a whole lot about it. But there, there's a, a certain uh, sequence that takes place um, where we just had a, a lot of different people and moving parts and I think trying to get everyone on the same page. That's, that's always tough. Um, it was the most extras and, and background I've ever worked with before. Um, but I, I had a really incredible crew of people, uh, many of which I've, I've worked with since on other projects and I've worked on their stuff and, and all of that. So um, I don't know, when I think back to those, those five days that, it's hard to really think there were definitely difficult moments and, and everyone was working hard. It, it certainly wasn't a breeze, but um, I think everyone found the joy in it. And I think that's sometimes a feels like a, a risk or a fear going in when you're working on something that's a heavy topic. That's, you know, not always easy to, to talk about, you know, you're going to be filming scenes that are, are tough. Um, and, and you, I don't know. I had this fear that that was going to be kind of the tone of the shoot of, of the set. And that wasn't the case at all. And while people were serious when they needed to be, there was so much laughter, so much joy in it. And and that felt very kind of healing and, and cathartic in a way. Um, and 
yeah so so i don't I, there's not too much struggle that that comes to mind and and i a lot of that is is based on the team that i had because uh, they made everything so much easier great well i mean what's next for you now this one is finally out in the world what's what's next yeah uh just i'm in a writing stage right now so i'm i'm writing a feature film i'm i'm developing a a tv series and um got a couple ideas for some shorts as well so i don't, i probably won't be shooting anything within you know anytime soon but i feel like i say that every 6 months and then i'm in pre production before i know it so uh we'll see um i got i got a lot of ideas trying to regroup and and uh, get this out there and and you know i appreciate talking to you and and anyone else who who wants to to talk about the the short or the process of making it um you know i think we put so much time into it and, and you have to sit on it for so long because of festival eligibility and requirements and stuff like that so it's nice to be able to share the the work with the world and and just have people experience it and react to it uh I think taking it to festivals, that's that's such a rewarding part of that process is is talking to people after and and um just getting their their thoughts and um you know the work we do it it doesn't really mean much if nobody watches it. So uh also not trying to take the stage for granted either. Yeah. Well, what advice do you have for people that are trying to get into filmmaking? Oh, um I would say it's you know it's it sounds um maybe a little corny or overly simplistic but but just just do it just start and and make something because you know everyone and their mom has an idea for a film right but far few people have a script and then a lot of people have scripts but fewer people have shot the scripts so if you can get far along enough the process even if it's not good at the beginning it won't be you're going to you're going to make mistakes you're going to learn from things it's not about making it good right away it's about learning the process but if you make something and you finish something that already sets you so much further ahead than than a lot of people that want to be doing this, because there's a lot of people that want to do it and you, you have to see it through and you have to fall in love with it. Because that's the other thing, too, is, is it's it's a lot of work. And if somewhere along the way it, it feels like it's not for you, then then listen to that. I think that's valuable, too. Um because it's it's a lot, but I I would say just throw yourself into it. Just just go ahead and do it. It's so easy to to make stuff now. Um, you know, with with just a handful of people, just just write, start small, and and then just scale it up. Absolutely. And then we always ask this question of our guests to end off our show. Um, do you have a favorite movie, and what is it? I have a go to answer. I don't really know if it's my favorite movie, but I, I went to film school and this was a common icebreaker. So uh, I, I tell people Strangers on a Train. Um, it's a, a Hitchcock movie from, I think, 51, uh, which is kind of a pretentious answer. But I have a, a special emotional connection to it because it was um, my Aunt Pat who loved black and white movies to the point where it was kind of a joke in our family. But here's Aunt Pat watching one of her black and white movies. Uh, this movie came on one time and she was like, just watch this opening scene with me. And I ended up watching the whole movie because it was just, I was gripped by it. And, and, um, you know, she passed away a few years ago and, and I always associate that movie with her and, and kind of us talking about it and then everything else that we would watch together after. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's would be my favorite would be Strangers on a Train. It's a good pick. <laughs> well, thank you for uh, joining me today and for talking about your film, which I believe will be out on YouTube at this point, right? Correct. Yes, it's out now if you'd like to check it out. Yeah. Well, thank you. And uh, yeah, just keep, just keep doing what you're doing. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on.